All right, so I'm going to be talking about porticaval anastomoses. This is on page 341 of the 2012 edition of First Aid. The picture looks like this, and there's some errors on the page in 2012, so I would get that checked out. And this is the cardiovascular system. We see here the heart in the center, the pulmonary circulation on the left side, and the systemic circulation on the right side. And there's also the portal system, which connects the GI tract to the liver, and it's filled with digestion products. That's why it's in purple here. Now, the purpose of the portal system is to drain the GI tract from the lower esophagus to the upper anal canal. And it also drains the spleen and pancreas. So it connects the GI tract to the liver. The purpose of that is so that you don't necessarily want toxins to enter directly into your bloodstream. So you want to put them into the liver first after absorption from your GI tract. That's what the portal system does. And there's also this alternate system called an anastomosis that connects the GI tract directly to the vena cava, the venous tract, and it avoids the portal system in the liver. And that doesn't normally contain any blood flow. But what does that mean? Porta caval anastomosis. Well, the porta means portal, the cava means the vena cava, and anastomosis is a connection between vessels. So this is an anastomosis between the portal veins and the systemic veins. It's an alternate route for blood to drain from the GI tract around the liver. And there are three clinically important ones, but they don't usually fill up with blood. We see here that they're empty. But if you had a process like cirrhosis, knock off blood flow through the liver, you would be draining blood from the GI tract through these porticaval anastomoses because the blood can't flow through the portal system through the liver. So this is called portal hypertension, where the blood pressure inside of the portal system increases, and it's usually from liver cirrhosis, from backflow from the liver. And there are three clinically important ones, and the first one is the esophagus. The esophagus is normally drained by the left gastric vein into the portal system, but it can also be drained by the caval system into the azygos vein. The clinical sign is esophageal varices, and that can lead to bleeding. So if you were to stick a camera down someone's esophagus, it might look something like this, where you have dilated and tortuous ve veins running down the esophagus. These are the azygos veins filled with blood, and they can bleed and rupture, and that's a common way people die from portal hypertension, is rupture of esophageal varices. The next clinically important one is the rectum. Now the rectum has two systems they can drain from, just like the esophagus. The portal drainage from the superior rectal veins, and the caval drainage is from the middle and inferior rectal veins. And if you flow blood through the middle and inferior rectal veins, they can become hemorrhoids, where they fill up and they prolapse through the rectum. These will be painless hemorrhoids because they're from the endoderm, that is above the pectinate line, and that means that they're innervated by visceral innervation rather than somatic innervation, and so they'll be painless. The last clinically important portal caval anastomosis is of the umbilicus. The umbilicus is normally drained by paraumbilical veins, but can also be drained by the super superficial epigastric veins. And what you'll see is something called caput medusae, and it looks like this. And the reason why it's called caput medusae is that the veins here are torturous around the umbilicus and they sort of resemble the hair of Medusa, these snakes. So in summary, you have gut, butt, and caput. That's the mnemonic. And gut refers to the esophageal varices, butt refers to the hemorrhoids, and caput refers to the caput medusae of the umbilicus. And if you see these three clinical signs, that means that you have portal hypertension. The way that you treat portal hypertension is with a procedure called the TIPS procedure. That's transjugular intrahepatic portosystemic shunt. And that connects the portal vein with the hepatic vein. And that means that you'll have an increased risk for encephalopathy. So the way the procedure looks is you've knocked off the liver. And rather than flow blood through the porticaval anastomoses, you're going to put in a stent that's going to connect the portal vein to the venous system. And that's going to allow the porticaval anastomoses to not be full of blood and to drain blood around the liver otherwise through this stent.